Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So yet another study in NMN in humans has recently been published. This time, for the first time, looking into NMN's effects on human metabolism. That's definitely enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new NMN study has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read that was penned by Brett J. Weiss, where he covers research that was published in the journal Science, which shows that NMN increases blood cell NAD levels and improves muscle insulin sensitivity and structure in pre-diabetic women. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. The molecule nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN as we all know it, has garnered much attention of late for its counteracting effects on metabolic deterioration and age-related diseases in rodents. But whether NMN supplementation improves metabolism in people has not yet been looked at. That's until now. This is the first randomized clinical trial to look at the metabolic effects of NMN administration in people. Samuel L. Klein and his team from the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis published a report in the journal Science showing for the first time that NMN improves the muscle insulin sensitivity of pre-diabetic women. They show that NMN exerts these positive metabolic effects by enhancing insulin's ability to trigger sugar uptake and increase the activity of genes involved in muscle structure and muscle remodeling. However, the NMN did not improve levels of fats in the blood, blood sugar, or blood pressure. Shinichiro Imai, MD, PhD, and co-investigator said in a press release, this is one step toward the development of an anti-aging intervention. The more research is needed to fully understand the cellular mechanisms responsible for the effects observed in skeletal muscle in people. To find out whether NMN really does boost NAD levels in human tissue, Samuel Klein and his colleagues examined the effects of taking 250 milligrams of NMN in capsules per day for 10 weeks on 13 pre-diabetic women aged between 55 and 75 who were also overweight. There was also a placebo group of 12 ladies. After the treatment course, they found that NMN significantly increased NAD levels in blood cells that are also crucial components of the immune system. Although NMN treatment did not elevate NAD levels in skeletal muscle, it did significantly increase NMN levels of metabolic byproducts. This suggests that the NMN was being converted into NAD and that the skeletal muscle utilized the NAD at such a rapid rate the NAD levels did not actually increase. NMN treatment increased NAD levels in blood cells called peripheral blood mononuclear cells, also known as PBMCs, and NMN metabolites in skeletal muscle. These graphs show the effects of 250 milligrams of NMN for 10 weeks on the levels of NAD plus in PBMCs on the left, and NMN metabolites in skeletal muscle on the right in pre-diabetic women who are also postmenopausal. The white bars represent NAD levels at the beginning of the study, and the gray bars represent NAD levels after 10 weeks of treatment. You can see that the NMN had an effect on both the levels of NAD in PBMCs on the left, and more noticeably on NMN metabolite N-methylnicotinamide in skeletal muscle on the right. To see what effects increasing NAD levels with NMN in skeletal muscle had on metabolism, Klein and his colleagues measured the muscle's sensitivity to insulin, a hormone that triggers the cellular uptake of sugars. They did so by looking at the rate of insulin infusion stimulated disposal of a sugar called glucose in muscle tissue and found 10 weeks of NMN treatment triggered about a 25% increase in muscle glucose usage. These findings indicate that NMN increases muscle tissue utilization 
of sugars to improve metabolism. To get at exactly how NMM was working, Klein and his colleagues looked at a signaling pathway indicative of muscle sugar uptake and remodeling to see whether improved muscle metabolism could translate to better muscle repair. Their findings showed that NMN treatment increased signaling related to muscle metabolism and to cell growth. This was consistent with the previous findings showing that NMN improves muscle tissue sensitivity to insulin and muscle metabolism and also indicated that NMN stimulates muscle remodeling pathways. To confirm that NMN improves muscle metabolism and remodeling, Samuel Klein and his colleagues examined gene activity patterns following the NMN treatment. In their analysis, they found that NMN promotes the activation of genes involved in muscle remodeling processes, especially increasing gene activity for platelet-derived growth factor, also known as PDGF. This regulates muscle growth and proliferation. These observations of NMN's effects on gene expression are in line with NMN improving muscle metabolism, muscle repair, and also muscle remodeling. Samuel Klein, who is also the director of the Center for Human Nutrition, said, the results from our study demonstrate NMN supplementation increases skeletal muscle insulin signaling, insulin sensitivity, and muscle remodeling in postmenopausal women with prediabetes who are overweight or obese. As always with these kind of studies, the researchers caution that more studies are needed to determine whether NMN has beneficial effects in the prevention or the management of prediabetes or even diabetes in people. Similar research has shown that another NAD boosting molecule, nicotinamide riboside, NR, does not improve human muscle metabolism, well, at least in men. Finding an explanation as to why NMN has been shown to improve muscle metabolism in humans, but NR has not, remains open for exploration. Let's hope the answers are soon on the horizon. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Great news then that another study of NMN in humans has returned such favorable results. Now I know it's not a competition, but to me there seems to be a lack of similar studies using nicotinamide riboside. I may be wrong, let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong and there are studies and send me links to those studies if you like. If you think I'm right, possibly let me know why this might be the case. So with regard to this study, I think further studies are warranted with regard to insulin sensitivity and insulin signaling. Um, preferably, if I was running the studies, I would use larger doses, more doses and possibly a larger cohort. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.